Hello and welcome to English 403 slash 503 Digital Rhetoric, Discourse, and Culture with me, Dr. Matt Barton. And, uh, you know, if that title doesn't get your mojo rising, I don't know what will. Of course, I have been uh, told uh, a few times throughout my life that I'm, you know, something of a computer nerd, a, little, <laughs> a bit of a tech geek. Uh, so, yeah, I guess it's only natural I would be drawn to this, like... Uh, you know, flies to honey, but uh, even if you're not, uh, maybe you don't consider yourself really technological or tech savvy or any of those things, I still think this course will be very, very useful and, and hopefully very interesting to you. You know, I'm certainly not here just to promote this stuff. You know, well, as we'll get into with these readings, there's a lot of a criticism of uh, this world of the digital realm. I mean, matter of fact, just the other day I was watching uh, Bill Maher, you know, had this segment about how people are just glued to their. Uh, smartphones, their mobile devices in ways that we just had, nobody saw that coming, you know, certainly not back, you know, you know, while I was in college, I'm not exactly an ancient, you know, Egyptian or <laughs> ancient Roman or anything, uh, but yeah, when I was in college, you know, it was certainly possible to get through the whole thing, really, without ever going online for anything, I mean, uh, you know, all the essays were printed out, uh, the professors uh, may or may not respond to email. You know, there's like a few cool professors that responded would respond to email. <laughs> a lot of them just would uh, weren't even connected to the system. You know, that was in the the mid '90s. Uh, so it's just amazing how you know. And of course, nobody had these phones, uh, and it's amazing just how quickly that sort of thing just overwhelms a society and becomes uh, really just ubiquitous. Uh, so I mean, if that sort of thing. Uh, you know, if that's the sort of thing you like to think about, or, you know, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Uh, but if you like to converse about such things in an academic sense, you know, I think you'll fit in quite well. And again, regardless, you don't need to be a computer programmer or have a extens extensive experience blogging or anything like that. Uh, and a matter, just one more thing about the title before we uh, move on. I just, you know, again, thinking about when I was in college or when this course, you know, I've been here since 2005. And I remember when we were talking about this course, it used to be called Computers in English, and then they wanted to update the title, so they said, let's use the word digital, you know, digital rhetoric, discourse, and culture. And heck, that's probably been 10 years ago at this point. Uh, but, even, but now, I would argue we're to the point now where it's almost like, what's not? You know, show me some rhetoric, discourse, and culture uh, happening uh, today that's not in some way digital. You know, everything is digitized to some extent. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a crazy to even think about that. It, it'd almost be, uh, <laughs> you know, strange. You almost need a course called Non-Digital Rhetoric Discourse and Culture or Analog or whatever. Because uh, it really does seem like just about everything, you know, has moved into this uh, this realm. And, you know, I, got some, I work with, uh, you know, creative writers will take my courses sometimes and we talk about how even, you know, these very traditional you know, things like novels or, or poems, you know, all of this stuff, it's uh, becoming increasingly important for those authors to, to learn about things like the Kindle and learn how to publish on, the, on, the, on the, all these e-books and all these uh, new platforms and apps and things. Uh, so even if, you, if, you, even if you're if you like the most traditional English major imaginable <laughs> and you really just want to work with that old, you know, manual typewriter in the garret and all that stuff, uh, chances are you'll still find it important to... Uh, learn at least enough to know how to put your stuff online in, in some fashion. So uh, anyway, I think there's something here for everybody. It's very important, very useful, uh, but also a lot of fun. You know, it's fun to think about this stuff. Okay, so hopefully that was enough of an advertisement, a promo. The uh, required books for the class. Uh, now you can, I think these are available in the bookstore. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Uh, if you want a printed copy, you could certainly pursue that route. You could probably get these on Amazon, you know, if you like. But uh, uh, and they're also available for free online. <laughs> so if you want to pay, pay. Uh, if if you don't want to pay, uh, you can certainly just look at the links. And I'll post the links to these, you know, when we get to the readings. Uh, some people just prefer a printed copy. I mean, if, I certainly sympathize with that. I like to uh, read things on my Kindle. Just because, even as even though I'm an English professor, I still occasionally come across a word I don't know what it means, and it's nice just to be able to push that word, <laughs> get a definition. Uh, but you know, if I had to pay, I'd probably just go with the free version. Uh, so you're welcome for that if you appreciate having uh, free textbooks. Uh, the uh, big project for the class 
is uh, the social media project. And again, I'm, I want to keep this intro lecture very brief, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. Uh, but I will try to anticipate some of the questions. I accidentally put my D2L open. I, I thought I had it set to where it wouldn't uh, show up until Monday, but apparently, <laughs> apparently some very eager, excited people got in there like before I was even ready with this, and they already had a bunch of questions about these, these blogs. But uh, basically the plan is to have you uh, with a small group, and the groups are random. You know, if you for some if you really want to work with somebody or whatever, or, or you, you really have a you know a good reason uh, to want to do it solo, uh, you can email me. We might be able to uh, accommodate you that way. Excuse me, but the idea is to have these little groups posting blogs. And if you had my 437, 537 class, and you want to just you know pick up that blog, you know maybe uh, use that, and your group is okay. You know that's fine with me. I don't really care about that. The biggest difference between this and 437 is that the blogs for this class will have some kind of a, you know, rhetorical purpose of some sort. Uh, could be promoting a cause or a club or, or a group, you know, just in some fashion trying to persuade a certain audience to do something. And again, we'll get more into that uh, later on in the course, but you know, that's, that's basically the idea. So you wouldn't want to have a blog about just sort of your personal diary. Uh, or, uh, you know, like a food blog where you just talk about your, your meals. <laughs> no, nothing like that. It needs to be something that, you know, with some kind of purpose where you're trying to get people to do things uh, that, that affect the real world in, in some fashion. I want to keep that fairly loose uh, so you can work in whatever you, uh, you're passionate about. But, but that's my idea. So we'll be applying the rhetorical theories to your, your blogs. Uh, and then there's a paper that goes with, the, you know, of course there is, uh, a research essay. Uh, if you're an undergrad, that needs to be at least 10 pages with three sources. And let's see what else. In 503, it needs to be a whopping 12 pages. So you got to write two more whole pages. Oh, my God. Six more, twice the number of sources. And you even need to do a 15-minute uh, conference presentation. And so my goal with that is, you know, by the end of the course, you have a paper you could actually present at a conference, which is important for you to be doing if you're a grad student. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's fairly standard stuff for a course like this, and there'll be plenty of topics we'll talk about over the semester, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding something uh, of interest to you to write about. Uh, and then the, what else do we need to talk about here? Uh, we'll use a lot of the, a lot of D2L for discussing the readings and answering questions on there. Uh, Ed puzzles like the one you're watching now, pretty much like a standard video, except occasionally there'll be some questions for you to answer uh, to get you thinking, diving a little bit deeper into the uh, lecture material. And then whatever else I can think of, there'll probably be some little activities here and there. I'll try to work those into the Ed puzzles as much as possible, but you know, I want to at least you, do, I want you to get your feet wet at least with all the different technologies we'll, we'll be talking about in here. Okay, so that is that. Let's take a quick look at the uh, at the website for the blog. So this is the oops. Let me go back a couple of spots. Homepage, I think. Yeah, here's the uh, the blogging page, blogs at Think Cloud State. So you don't need to do any any of this right now. I just want you to take a look and see what the site looks like. So when you you need to find it, you'll have a <laughs> the idea. Uh, and this is one I was looking at earlier. Uh, Inframedia Services, or IMS, and I guess it's no big surprise that they would have, a, you know, be on top of these blogs and doing a good job. Uh, but you can get a sense of, like, what's possible. You can see they put links in there, and they've got some various formatting. It's not that dissimilar to any other sort of, you know, uh, word processing program you might have used. Uh, they tend to put a lot of links and things in there. Let's see, there's some comments. This is Plumman uh, doing this one. So that's kind of what it would look like. Uh, here's one for the English department that we've been working on. Had Mary, you might know her. Uh, graduate student. I think, she, yeah, I'm pretty sure she's graduated <laughs> at this point. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she was working on the uh, English department blog, doing a really great job. And then here's the blog for the, uh, this is Alex Reed's blog. He's the author of the essay we'll be reading uh, later this week about why blog. So I thought I'd take a look at his blog. And he's come a long way since he wrote that article. You know, certainly fancier. But really, you know, look at this. You know, the way this is laid out, this uh, template and stuff. It, to me, this, you know, looks pretty good. Uh, 
And it's not that hard to create something like this. If you scroll down here, you see he's actually using WordPress, the exact same software that we're that you'll be using. So you could easily make something just like this that looks kind of uh, awesome. <laughs> So anyway, again, I don't want to spend too too much time on this because we'll be talking about it later this week. But just that's basically the idea, you know, creating things like this. And I think that's really about all I need to cover in this uh, in this lecture. Now with the, I guess, one more word about this this blogging setup. This is the way I envision this working: is that we have a nine blog post throughout the semester. And if you're in a group of two other people, the idea is that you'll do three, uh, partner number two will do three, and partner number three will do three, all adds up to nine. Uh, if you're in a group with only two, or maybe you're doing it solo for some reason, then you'd only have three. Uh, so you just kind of up to you try to spread it out, but there, there's three different deadlines throughout the semester for the uh, final draft of those blocks. Uh, so you want to pick, you know, if you are doing a, Doing it all yourself, you know, it'd be pretty obvious. <laughs> uh, but I, you, basically, what I'm saying is, you, you're only going to get graded uh, for your blog post. So even if the other person is, you know, maybe they don't do as good of a job as you do, it's not your problem. You'd just be graded for uh, your blogs. Uh, but there are two things that are co-produced. There's the audio podcast, and then there's a video, and we'll be using Zoom actually to uh, to do those. They're not due to the end of the semester, but you know they're <laughs> they're not going to be that uh, weighed that heavily since this isn't you know an audio course or a video course. Uh, but you know those will be co-produced. So just you know being honest with you about that. Uh, let's see what else we have. I think that's about it. I always feel like I'm forgetting something important, but you know I guess that that's life. If you uh, you know do have any questions or comments. You know, do let me know. Uh, hopefully you're familiar with D2L, but you know if you're not, uh, just remember when you go to the home page for the course right here, let's see. Most of the important stuff will be, actually it's usually here on this calendar tab to the right, but if you click on content, uh, then you can find your way back to that syllabus I was reading and look at the reading list and assignment instructions and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave it here. I guess it's about 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not bad uh, for Dr. B. So we'll, we'll stop it here. But if you have questions or comments, love to hear those. You know, let me know what you're thinking, and I'll see you soon.